Regulator boats are well known in the sport fishing crowd for their fishability, reliability, and dry ride. They truly believe in the no compromise attitude. It's time for you to go in and see just how they put their hearts, minds, and talents into building one of the most reliable boats in the sport fishing crowd. Regulator Marine is nestled in the small North Carolina community of Edenton, surrounded by southern charm and filled with dedicated people. The company is known for and advertises its finest in offshore sport fishing boats name, so come along as we show you just how they build their best-in-class boats. Welcome to Edenton, North Carolina and Regulator Marine. We're glad you've taken the opportunity to come today and visit the factory. We want to show you how we build the finest in offshore sport fishing boats. Every mold is carefully checked for damage and blemishes prior to entering lamination. Here's a mold that's passed inspection, is being waxed, and a layer of mold release will be applied to make it easier to pop the deck, in this case, off the mold when ready. Before spraying a layer of gel coat on the mold, a final wipe down with the tack cloth removes any dust or airborne particles that may have fallen into the mold. Remember, anything on or in the mold will be part of the hull when it cures. Hull IDs are placed in the mold according to a label maker tape. Two color hulls are masked here. Marcus has already sprayed the lower portion of the hull and is ready to spray the color on the upper portion. Again, every layer is carefully checked for proper thickness. An armor guard barrier coat is applied to help prevent print through or seeing the fiberglass through the gel coat. This coat enhances durability and also helps reduce blistering. Next, Travera Stop Print is applied to flat surfaces such as hull sides and consoles. It's the purple looking material on the sides and is applied to help prevent print through of the knitted material which will be applied next. Each part is treated the same way. Here the underside of a T-top is taped off to add colored gel coat. The black area is the inside of the upper electronics box. The strakes are filled with polybond material which strengthens the hull at the strakes, gives the glass crew a flatter surface to work with, and significantly reduces the opportunity for air pockets to form. More resin and chop mat are applied then topped with trim fiberglass cloth. Notice that there will be overlap in several areas, including the keel. This adds significant strength in these areas, and in the keel it's about 11 layers worth. Devenacell, which is a closed cell coring material, as well as other composites are applied to small parts in larger areas where added strength is needed, such as deck lids, liner sole, and stern. Sterns are reinforced and clamped to ensure proper penetration and strength of materials. The parts are lined up on the floor, sprayed with resin, and quickly assembled in the liner, deck cap, and consoles according to numbers much like a puzzle. To ensure proper penetration of the resin, a weighted vibrating roller is passed over the parts before spraying a top layer of chopped mat. Dark pieces here will have the T-top bolted through them, and wellboard surrounds a base where the screws will be tightened. The stringer or grillage system, which adds strength to the hull, is built separately and is waiting to be bonded to the hull. The hollow interiors of the grillage should be filled with foam after bonding to add strength and reduce noise. The space where the fuel tank will eventually be is glassed in prior to adding the tank in the hull. With the grillage in place, it's time to set the liner. After the liner's in place and electrical and fluid lines are run, it's time to dry fit the deck cap. A perfect fit means some adjusting will likely occur before bonding the deck cap to the hull. With the liner insured, hoses and connections are made as the deck lowers onto the hull. The deck cap and hull are bonded together and through bolted with stainless steel fasteners for an uncompromising construction process. This finishes the process of attaching the deck cap to the hull. With the deck cap in place, the final process quickly falls into place. The center console is bonded and bolted into place and the process moves toward adding the engines and heading out to sea. Resin transfer molding is a process regulator uses to make strong durable lids that are finished on all sides. First the male and female mold are sprayed and prepped with resin and fiberglass and reinforcing materials added. Then the two are drawn together with a vacuum pulling the resin across the mold. The result is a product which is finished on both sides, mildew resistant and easy to clean. Components are added toward the end of the assembly line where the engines are also pulled from stock and installed. It takes Chase about 10 minutes to properly mate each engine to the boat. All the mechanical and electrical connections are already pre-matched to the engine. First each bolt is coated with sealant and inserted into the composite reinforced transom. Next the engines align with the predetermined bolt hole set up and bolted into place. With the engine tightly in place, the hoist is removed and the boat heads to final prep and inspection. Once the boats have passed a final quality assurance inspection, each is thoroughly cleaned, shrink wrapped, and loaded on the trucks or trailers for delivery to dealers around the world. While the southern charm can easily sway just about anyone, being southern myself, I'm able to see clearly that the difference in regulator is found in the dedicated craftsmen and women 
the commitment to success, and the power of positive influence from the stockroom to the boardroom. Well, that was certainly an eye-opening tour. It's not often we'll get to see how a top-quality boat can be built with an uncompromising attitude. I hope I've whetted your appetite for how a regulator believes a boat should be built.